The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, blood or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is, it is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So today's reading of the opening verses from the Gospel of John is really cool, I think. It's totally out there compared to the ways that the other Gospels begin. Matthew begins with the genealogy of Jesus, tracing tracing Jesus' roots all the way back to Abraham. And then we have a short account of Jesus' birth and the visit of the Magi. Mark begins with the baptism of Jesus. He appears out of nowhere. He gets baptized by John the Baptist, and then immediately he's thrown into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. Luke begins with angels foretelling the births of John the Baptist and Jesus. Mary, who is pregnant with Jesus, visits her cousin Elizabeth, who is pregnant with John the Baptist. And John is born first. And then we have John's Gospel. The beginning, or prologue, which I just read, is a mystical, metaphorical, symbolic birth story. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. So John begins with what he calls the Word, an abstract description of of what? The Word spoken at creation, let there be light. The Word given to Israel through Moses, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. The word crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. This word became flesh and lived with humanity. This word told Lazarus to come forth out of his tomb. This word taught us to pray our Father in heaven. 
This word told us, this is my body, this is my blood. This word that came into the world was rejected by many, but to those who believe, the word gives power to become children of God and the gift of eternal life. So this word now is no longer an intangible, abstract concept. It's living, breathing, flesh and blood. And it came to live with us. The message, which is a modern rendering of the Bible that I read quite often in sermons, puts the 14th verse of the first chapter of John in this way. The word became flesh and blood, and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one-of-a-kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. This almighty word, now flesh and blood, has moved into the neighborhood. And not just any neighborhood, but our neighborhood, my neighborhood, your neighborhood. It's not a palace, not a penthouse apartment, not a mountain compound out in the middle of nowhere, but a neighborhood where kids play, ride bikes, slide down snowbanks, a neighborhood where block parties take place on hot summer nights, a neighborhood that watches out for each other. This creating word, now flesh and blood, moved into a neighborhood where suffering is an everyday occurrence, a neighborhood that has seen abuse, been victimized by crime and violence, a neighborhood that lives in hunger and chronic fear, anxiety of what terrors that may come or may not come. This light-filled word, now flesh and blood, lives in every neighborhood from the highest to the lowest. The message says, we now see a -a one-of-a-kind glory that is generous inside and out, true from start to finish. Christ is generous in his glory. But if you look at Christ's life, you may not see a lot of glory. He wasn't born in glory. He certainly did not live a glorious life. Being arrested, tortured, and executed really is not all about glory. But there are signs of glory in his life. There's glory when He heals uh, lepers, weeps alongside mourning sisters, raises a young girl from the dead, feeds 5,000 people with a few loaves and a couple of fish. This is God's glory, and God is generous with it, generous to the point of dying on the cross for us, generous to the point of rising again in the third day, defeating sin, death, and the power of evil. Generous to the point of giving that glorious victory to you and to me, even though we do not deserve to share in that victory. We need this word in our neighborhood. You may think homelessness and housing insecurity is a big city problem, but we have it here in Bloomfield. Will we help everyone willingly in our neighborhood? If Christ can live with, eat with, preach to, and forgive those on the margins, we are too as well. We need this word in our state. Human trafficking, believe it or not, takes place in Nebraska, where people are bought and sold as property. Human trafficking seeks to remove God's gift of human dignity. So let's fight for everyone's safety and confirm, too, that they are beloved children of God, just like we are. We need this word in our country. Threats of war loom on the horizon. The United Methodist Church, a denomination in which we have full communion partnership, is seriously considering splitting up into other denominations over sexuality issues. There's gun violence during worship. Christ, the light, the word that, the light that has overcome darkness is right here, right now in our neighborhood, our city, our state, our nation, our world. God chooses to take on skin and walk with us, 
I mean, how amazing is this? How awesome is this? How humbling is this? But what I don't get is this. Why do we choose to find glory in our own selves and not in this word that's among us? What do we hope to gain if we follow our own path? Haven't we learned from our past? Do we realize we are truly missing something? And what we're missing from all of this is love. Love is what comes to our neighborhood. Love is living right next door to us. And we ignore it. We question it. We mistrust it. If we love like God loves, we fear we might be questioned, given crude labels, ridiculed. But you know what I say to that? So what? Go ahead. Do your worst. Call me a name. Ridicule me. The world did its worst to Christ, and it seemed like the world won in the end. But Jesus, the light, the word, has the final say, and that victory is mine, and it's yours. And that victory lives with us in our neighborhood. Amen.